Uh, next, I want to welcome Natasha Springer from Kickstarter to the stage. Uh, she's going to talk about keeping it secret and keeping it safe. You need this or you have that one. Okay, we have two. It's all good to go. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so keep it safe, keep it secret. Uh, you could think that it would be a vault talk, but all the engineering team really wanted me to name the talk uh, with this. This is a reference to a quote from the movie, The Lord of the Rings. Um, my talk will actually give you an overview on how we are using vault and console at Kickstarter. So, hi, my name is Natasha Springer. Uh, I am currently a remote cloud operation on engineer at Kickstarter. And previously, I was working at Dow Jones as a DevOps engineer, where I started in the internal tools team and then moved on to building the tools to deploy the Wall Street Journal. And before that, I was a plant scientist, but that's another story. Um, and also, as you can see on this slide, I have my hands pretty full at home. So Kickstarter. Uh, for those who don't know Kickstarter, it is a funding platform for creative projects. Somebody has an idea for a comic book, a toy, an art festival, uh, an open source project, a video game. They come to Kickstarter, they put their project up on the site, they can offer rewards for various pledge levels, and then their family, their friends, strangers on the internet come and give them money. Um, at the end of the deadline, if they reached their uh, funding goal, this is when we process the transaction and the creator get, gets the funds to start the project. To give you a little bit of an idea of the scale we're working with, every five seconds, someone backs a Kickstarter project anywhere in the world. Close to 13 million people have pledged towards new creative ideas so far. And less than a month ago, we crossed a total of $3 billion to um, ind independent creators uh, in pledges on Kickstarter. Um, another surprising fact about Kickstarter is that our engineering team is pretty small. Um, we're just counting. I think we are 24 engineers with six managers. Um, but uh, our engineering team is truly agile and also very diverse, as you can see. Um, the ops team consists of three engineers and one manager, and we all work from a different state. We're completely distributed. So Kickstarter. Um, we're moving from an eight-year-old Ruby on Rails application towards a microservice-oriented architecture. As we're breaking the monolith, we quickly realized we also needed to build the tools and the systems around a service-oriented architecture. Uh, we followed the 12-factor app methodology, and we already had a strict separation of our configs from our code. So that was easy. But we started looking for solutions to manage all the secrets and configs, and we simply loved the fact that Vault a security tool developed by HashiCorp to do exactly this, managing secrets, is entirely open sourced. Um, as a security tool, it truly benefits from the developers' community scrutiny. So as we started setting up Vault, we realized it was important for us for it to be completely resilient and scalable. So our initial goal was to set a stateless vault cluster. We are also big fans of chaos engineering, and killing a vault instance should not be a big deal. Our vault infrastructure involves putting an elastic load balancer in front of an auto scaling group of instances. Behind, no, after <laughs> looking at options um, for vault storage backends, we decided to pick console. So when running in high availability mode, as we are, Vault servers have two states. Um, they can be either active or standby. For multiple Vault servers sharing one storage backend, 
only a single instance will be active at all times, while all the other ones are hot standbys. The trick to setting up an ELB in front of Vault is to use the V1 sys half route. This route will return a 200 response code only if your Vault instance is active and unsealed. Meanwhile, uh, an instance that is uh, sealed would return a 503. A client request uh, is then always forwarded to the active Vault instance with this ELB help check. And as you can see here, we're running a cluster of uh, three instances and only one is active at all times. So currently, if our Vault um, cluster auto-scales, an ops uh, engineer um, has to manually unseal Vault and we'll get um, an alert to do so. Um, and this is on purpose. We did choose not to automate the unsealing process as we do feel that it is the best way to keep our secret infrastructure fully secured. Um, entire Vault infrastructure is maintained on one single cloud formation template uh, that we keep in GitHub. So a nifty tool that we built is a Vault client script for engineers to access secrets inside Vault. Once the script runs, a Docker container is built that will establish an SSH connection with Vault and this script leverages the GitHub, GitHub half method offered by Vault. It will authenticate users on whether they are or not members of a private GitHub team that we have set up. This way, all our engineers have seamless access to Vault and do not need to worry about the, exp the token expiring or to get, uh, to get access to their application secret. Uh, and within the company, we have set some standards on how an engineer should store secrets. And we have um, communicated these and published these internally on our wiki. This, this path make it really uh, easy to create proper access control lists for each application. We all use the same path based on service name and environment, uh, making it easier to uh, automate secret, secret retrieval. We also support a global path uh, for each service to avoid any redundancy in the data entry process. So storing our secrets secret, uh, securely was important, but we needed to make sure that the data would be encrypted during transit as well. So, so far, the best method out there for transit encryption is uh, TLS. We are a small team and we do not have an engineer completely dedicated to security or to maintain an entire PKI infrastructure. One of Vault's best kept secrets uh, and maybe its most underrated feature is its uh, PKI backend. Um, I think most of you will agree with me, encryption is hard, but Vault actually makes it pretty easy. Uh, it acts as a certificate authority and issues and maintains certificate for all our servers, in it, allowing us to enable TLS uh, traffic encryption within our VPC. So any downtown, downtime in the Vault service would have dramatic effect on downstream clients. So we chose console, which acts as a highly available backend. This way, our Vault instances remain completely stateless and can easily be brought up or down. Our console server cluster has three nodes in another scaling group behind an elastic load balancer. Our elastic load balancer health check is actually done on the leader route to make sure that the cluster remains healthy at all times and that there is no loss of quorum. Our entire console infrastructure is also described on one single cloud formation template kept in version control. Um, we realized we could leverage cons console uh, to store all of our non-sensitive configurations as, as well. 
and we do not yet use it for its uh, service discovery capabilities. Since console is a vault storage backend, it became pretty evident that it was very important to back all that data properly. So we set up console backups, um, and every hour we have a script running in a cron file that runs the command console snapshot save. This will make a snapshot with all the data. We stamp it with the node uh, IP and the date, and we send that to uh, AWS S3. This way, if we need to, we can always rebuild our entire server cluster with very minimal loss of data. Um, just be aware that this command is relatively new. It was uh, released, I think, a couple months ago in uh, console 071. So at Kickstarter, we are also big fans of communicating with Slack. Um, and we built an ops chatbot to allow any engineers to list, read, or write non-sensitive key value pairs, such as feature flags, for example, on console. This way, process remains completely transparent, and any engineer can see and search what has been done to the configs, um, with, and, and, and so everyone can see it. Um, we're a big fan of transparency, and adopting a chat ops model really helped the ops team being more collaborative and open with the rest of the engineering team. So um, now that we have a stateless vault infrastructure, a high availability backend with console, our next step was to build all the tools that would allow containers and applications to authentic with vault and retrieve all uh, their secrets. At Kickstarter, we use AWS Elastic Container Service to deploy new code to containers. And we found out that the Vault App Role backend was the perfect authentication method for services to authenticate automatically with Vault. An App Role represents a set of Vault policies and longing con constraints that must be met in order to receive a Vault token associated with those policies. One constraint that can be set, for example, is a CIDR block only allowing requests from specific IP addresses. At the time, we were also doing a whole lot of work with AWS Lambdas. So Lambdas are serverless compute services that run code in response to specific events. In this case, the triggering event would be the creation of a service with a cloud formation template. So you're gonna ask me, but how does, this, how does it all really work? So once um, uh, we launch a cloud formation resource, um, Lambda is triggered that will create a, a role in Vault associated with a very specific access list, and the Lambda will retrieve a role ID and a secret ID with a short TTL and store these on Amazon S3. Uh, we use the ECS task I am role ID as an identifier to name our S3 directory. This way, container always knows where to look for its credentials to get a vault token associated with all those, constra those constraints. Uh, once a container boots up, it's then a able to source its environment viable and make them available when the service starts. Um, I have actually recently uh, open sourced the code for this Lambda. Uh, you can find it on GitHub uh, in the Kickstarter organization um, under uh, serverless app role manager. Um, it's also written in functional JavaScript if you're into that kind of thing. And um, less than a week ago, HashiCorp released a new backend for Vault, um, the AWS auth method based on IAM principles. Uh, we're really looking forward to testing it out and um, see how it compares with this system for ECS containers. So how, how does the container uh, really get its secrets? Well, we needed to find a way for a container 
to have access to all its key value pairs as soon as the service starts. So to achieve this, we put all our logic um, in a Docker entry point script. Once a container is spawned, all it knows is its environment and service, and it has access to its AWS metadata. A container can query its metadata and find out what its IAM role is. It will then allow it to retrieve its secret ID and role ID and from S3 and use these credentials to get a vault token. Um, we are then using another lightweight Unix tool, uh, ENV Console. ENV Console is a great tool that allows applications to be configured with environment variables. Uh, we use ENV Console to retrieve and create a file with all of our key value pairs from both console and vault, and then simply source this file inside the container environment. And if you remember, we also have this global path set up. Well, uh, ENV console makes it pretty easy um, to, to do this, and it, it's pretty good at respecting this, since uh, any environment-specific value will always take precedence over the value set in the global path. And there you have it. The container environment is populated with all your key value pairs and made available to your service as soon as it starts. So the last thing I really wanted to touch on is how important metrics and monitoring are to us. Um, it gives us complete visibility of our entire infrastructure and gives us an insight on how our clusters and servers are doing at all times. In both Vault and console, we use the telemetry configuration option uh, that sends uh, all the metrics to local statsd server. The, these metri metrics are then picked up by the Telegraph agent, which sends them to the InfluxDB server, and we then visualize all the metrics with Grafana. Uh, Telegraph, Influx, and Grafana gain all open source tools. Uh, we do, do love open source tools at Kickstarter. And this is just an example of, of what our Vault Grafana dashboard looks like. Uh, where we check for uh, key metrics indicators. Uh, we also wrote a few custom metrics and we use them to check for sealed servers, if um, everything is okay with the backend, if uh, there's a leader, um, and so on. So we really enjoy working with Vault and Console at Kickstarter, but I definitely must admit that the frequency of releases of new features uh, keeps me on my toes. <laughs> and this was just a really broad uh, overview on how we use console and vault at Kickstarter. I uh, just also wanted to give a shout out to my amazing teammates, um, Kyle, Aaron, and Logan, uh, who is here today. And if you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter at DevOps Natasha. Thank you, everyone.